What's going on, y'all? Welcome to my channel, The Stone Mandalorian. I'm The Stone Mando. You can call me Stone for short or Cody, whichever you prefer. And today I got a wicked, wicked brand new figure review for y'all here today. And I am so elated to finally have this in hand. And this is the Destroyka, the, the Destroyka, the De Droidica Destroyer Droid. I'm going to get the box to spin for y'all. And dude, this box is way, way bigger than I anticipated. Like, if you look, it's almost the, it's almost the width of two Black Series boxes. It's, it's really crazy. But uh, man, this was this was pipelined uh, about eight months ago, six months ago, and ended up getting promo pics released for it. About it went up for pre-order. I want to say like three or four months ago, and I obviously slapped slapped two on my big bad pile of loot, and I'm just so stoked to finally have these in hand. Uh, this is, as you can see, the fourth figure in the Phantom Menace subline. Well, I, I said this in my other Phantom Menace reviews. I love this yellow color that they have for the bo the, the packaging. And the, it also says 2023 on the packaging, so that that that's a telltale telltale sign that this they were already having the packaging going through manufacturing and fabricating in in uh, last year. But I'm really excited to get this opened up and go over the articulation. I've watched a couple of reviews because I just couldn't refrain from from watching a couple. I was really curious how the articulation was going to work on this figure, and just looking at it, like the red on the eyes looks great. The bits of chrome on like the cylindrical parts of the legs and the arms and stuff like that it just looks really badass and just from a presentation standpoint not even getting my hands on it it just the paint looks great the sculpting looks freaking phenomenal and dude i just can't i know i've said this already i'm just so elated to finally have this thing man and i, I don't know if i'm gonna throw this on my phantom menace shelf my clone war shelf it can really go anywhere you know that's the good thing about these these droids but i definitely plan on uh, probably, I'm probably going to end up getting another one or at least one or two so I can have three or four on the shelf eventually one day. And me and my wife, we actually went to go see The Phantom Menace for the 25th anniversary um, re-release in theaters. And when we went, I was pretty much like, she was just looking at me like I was stupid because I was literally like saying every line right before the character said it. She just gave me that that look. If you've ever gotten it from your significant other, like, fucking really, dude? Are you serious? But... Once again, I'm going to say I'm just so happy to have these in hand, but let me quit rambling on because if you watch my videos, you know I have a tendency to do that. But let me get these things out of the box and we'll get a closer look at the sculpting, the articulation, and just the paint and the overall figure. All right, y'all, here's the Joy Dick out of the box. And, dude, what what a magnificent looking figure, man. Uh, you know, I was messing around with the articulation, just messing around with it right when I got out of the box. And th there was so there's so much engineering that went into this figure. Whoever designed the sculpt and the engineering for this figure needs a raise from Hasbro. Because I just, I'm so impressed how they were able to do this, man. This is one of the more, I would say, complicated droids that I, I feel like would need to be done figure wise. And I'm just, dude, it's, the, the articulation is just, it's honestly kind of insane. Um, but, and I'll, I'll give y'all, we'll go over all that, of course. But just looking at it here, like, look, it, it was, Dude, it took me two, like, not even 10 seconds to get it into this position. Like, obviously, there's not a whole lot of posing you could do with a Jordica. They pretty much just stand there and obviously fire their blasters. But just the presence it has just from standing there is really amazing, dude. And the articulation, once again, it's very weird. But, like, it's everything I feel like you would it, – It's every, it has everything you would want and need to pull off the certain poses. Or, obviously, you're not going to do, be doing anything dynamic with a Jordica. But – uh, I have seen people where they've rolled it up into ball mode, like it's rolling in the in the rolling form. Looks badass, but who the hell is going to display their Jordica in ball form? Not me, dude. This this guy is staying just like this on my shelf. Uh, I love this kind of like copper, purplish red paint they have for the Jordica. It looks it looks like you just put it out the movie. And like I, I've said in my reviews before, Hasbro always kills it with aliens and droids in, in the Black Series. And once again, this is no exception, dude. I'm just so impressed. Uh, all, all the hoses that are on here, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but back behind the blaster or the wrist blaster or whatever, and then even on the back of the arms, the, the texture on the hosing is just really, really nice, dude. I'm extremely impressed by this figure. And it was well worth the wait. Uh, when I started collecting uh, roughly about two years ago, and I was looking for figures that I wanted to get in my collection, I was really surprised that this wasn't in the line yet. I was looking everywhere. I was like, I, I, maybe it's 
just coming out and I just I haven't gotten a I just haven't come across it uh research wise. But no, it wasn't in the line at all. And it's kind of crazy. It's 2024. The line started in 2013. So the line's been alive for eleven years. It's kind of insane to me that it took eleven years to get I don't this I don't want to say character, but this type of droid from the CIS separatist side of the army building the army building side. It's just really insane to me that it took eleven years to get this in the line. But honestly, that being said, I feel like if it had come out any sooner, it wouldn't be this badass, man. I feel like, obviously, this year and last year was a really good time to be a prequel fan, especially this year more so. Um, last year, the marketing team for Hasbro did they did kind of speak on and hint to that they were going to be focusing more on prequel uh, era figures this year, and like I, once again, as I've said on this channel before, uh, me and my brother. That that's when that was my version of Star Wars growing up. That was my '77 Star Wars. A new I know it wasn't called a New Hope then, but it is now. But that was my '77 Star Wars. When I went to go see Phantom, well, I didn't see it in theaters, but when I seen Phantom Menace with my brother when I was a kid, it, I, it was just that. That's our era of Star Wars. You know what I mean? And the prequels got a lot of flack and uh, a, a lot of uh, unnecessary hate that they didn't deserve. But they've kind of aged like a fine wine. Uh, there's a lot of cheesy parts of the sequels, but that's that's kind of a part of Star Wars, man. Even if you go back to the the OT, the original trilogy, there's a lot of cheesy parts in it too. And as we know, George Lucas isn't a great dialogue writer. He's a he's a visionary, not a director. But I'm getting off track here. We're talking about let me, let me get back. I'm reeling myself back in. Uh, just going like I said, the sculpting phenomenal, paint incredible. Uh, I'm really surprised that they were able to fit this articulation, all the points of articulation on here. I don't even know how many there is. But just thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with this figure, dude. And so, so elated to finally have, have him in my hands. And I can't wait to get him on the shelf. But uh, let's go over the articulation. I'll give you all a closer look at the paint and the sculpting as well. So now, I, I, I'm not entirely sure how to get him into ball form. I'm going to have to watch a couple YouTube videos. But I did see that uh, Mike Case from Black Series Cantina, uh, about a week ago, he actually posted a little quote-unquote tutorial of how to actually get it into ball form mode. And a couple of people have attempted it, and it looks good. But I think Mike Case really kind of got the the, the little uh, what was the little minute details to really help get it into that ball form. So I'm going to have to check that out. That being said, I'm not going to be able to show you how to get it into ball form. But what I can do is show you all the articulation that it does have. So starting off here, it's kind of weird. I don't know where to grab this thing yet, dude. It's just so big. It's so badass. Uh, but let's just here, let's just start off. Let's start off from the top and then we'll just work our way to the bottom. So here at the head, as you can see, got some up and down articulation on this just the head piece, the flap. He can look side to side as well. Look at look at the red on the eyes. So well painted. Very clean. It's got this weird hose piece right here on the bottom. Um, now this whole back piece, it does move as well. There's some articulation here. You can see this little this little point of articulation. This this whole it hinges from right there. So this whole the whole upper body moves along with the arms, the head, and the turrets and stuff like that. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, there is some up and down as you can see right here. You can see the hinge for the arms right here. Not a whole lot, but they can come up about that far and they can go down a little bit too. Something you want to keep in mind if you're if you have the Django Fett figures or uh, uh, Paz not Paz Vizsla I'm sorry well I think Paz Vizsla applies too because he's got some hoses on the back of his of the, his figure itself but uh, the Django Fett and the Paz Vizsla uh, not damn it not Paz pre Vizsla damn it not Paz sorry y'all Paz Vizsla uh, using that old Django mode it does have the hoses um, so you want to be careful with that and this go this same same thing goes for this figure these hoses right here. Just be careful you don't, when you're articulating it and messing around with it, that you don't pinch these in between the joints or you just don't want to stress these a whole lot. They are pretty malleable, so I feel like they they do have some give because of that. They're kind of pliable. So I feel like it would take a lot of force to uh, to break those off, but it's still something you want to keep keep an eye out and just be cautious for. Uh, the arms, the, little, the turrets can go all the way up right there, touching the arm. They can go down all the way too. I don't want to stress it, but they can go down pretty far. Uh, and 
I'll, I'll go over paint. Let me stay on articulation because this, this figure does have some nice paint apps. Um, getting to, so there's a little bit of like kind of, I guess it's like the this version of this droid's ab crunch. So that's kind of nice. Oh, and I, I didn't show you the little, this little hinge in here also allows for movement. Look at the way that moves, dude. That's some insane engineering. And like I said earlier, whoever engineered this and designed this sculpt needs needs a freaking raise, Hasbro. So get on that. So there are the arms, and looks to be, yeah. So, oh, I just know, yeah, dude. Look at that. I I, I wasn't sure, but it looked like it. Look at this. Look at the rod. How it goes into the arm. That is fucking badass, dude. That is brilliant. It's kind of like uh. How they did the newer C-3PO version, the newer version of C-3PO and uh, 4LOM or 4LOM, whatever you, o OT purists call them 4LOM, but my generation says 4LOM. Either one works for me, but that's so cool how they fit that in here. That looks great, dude. It's even got some paint on it, got some silver chromy paint. Kind of give off that uh, that chromy cylindrical syndrical look. That's awesome. It does have some face tilt right here, too, that I figured I'd. Looks like it's it goes 360 degrees. Yeah, it does. It goes completely around. That's pretty nice. Pretty cool. And uh, also these flaps, uh, these are they're supposed to open when they're in attack mode. These these flaps on the side, but they do close up. So you just want to. And here's the hinges for those as well. Now when it goes into ball form, these will be closed. But every time in the movie when they're in in blasting position, attack position. These are always open, and I've seen a couple of reviews where people have forgotten to. Let me push my my nerd glasses up. You're supposed to pull these out when it's in the tack position. I'm I'm just talking shit, y'all. But it does look cooler with it uh, pulled out, in my opinion. And in every bit of Star Wars uh, media, Clone Wars animated series, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Um, lost my train of thought there. Um, Maybe it'll come back to me. I'm, I'm going to keep rolling. I'm going to keep rolling. So getting down here to the legs, there's also a hinge right here, as you can see. Uh, no no tilt or anything, but they do they do move up quite a fair amount. I'm trying to get his arm out of the way here, y'all. Bear with me. So his feet go up that far, and they go down about that far. Another point of articulation is this hinge here, and you can see how deep that is. You can get, you can get that far up. And you can get that far down. Also, some nice paint here. Some nice silver, crummy looking paint. Okay, there is. I, I, I thought there was tilt when I opened it at the box. So there's another hinge right here, as you can see. So that's where you get your side to side uh, pivot or tilt, whatever you'd like to call it. And this is on all the legs. All the legs are the same, as well as the back. Man, what a, what an awesome figure, dude! It's so fun messing around with this thing. But this is definitely a figure you gotta kind of mess mess with a little bit and kind of get used to how it works and how it moves. But that goes with any figure, right? All every figure is different. But man, this this is so much fun to mess around with. But uh, that is pretty much all the articulation that I'm looking at that I can see or find. Um, yeah, really awesome, dude. So now I guess we'll give y'all a closer look at some of the paint. And as I stated earlier, you got the, this nice red color on the eyes, very cleanly applied. I love that so much. And even the hoses are a different color. It's kind of got this like brownish, like dark khaki color to it. Very industrial looking. I like it. And I like this kind of primer gray they used for the majority of the body itself. And just these, these pieces, like, like the rods here. This, these cylinders, man, that, that's so awesome. That's just such a nice touch. See, even even right here on the legs. And this was a deluxe figure, so this was thirty three ninety nine. But honestly, dude, for the size of it and the amount of articulation and the amount of paint on it, I know it's it's not a. I don't know. It, it is kind of a lot of paint, though, man. When, when I'm sitting here looking at it, you got all these little. Cylindrical pieces that are painted chrome. Every little bit is chrome. It is not missed. And the eyes here, that's red. They, even if that is just a couple cents, you're doing, I don't know, 80,000 figures. That's that's 80,000 cents right there, even if it was just a penny. 
But I really like this color that they used. It looks very, very accurate to my mind's image. It looks just like what I see and think of when I think of a Jordica. Master Destroyers. <laughs> They're no match for our Jordicas. Okay, y'all, I'm, I'm done. I'm done nerding out now. Uh, but yeah, just the paint looks great, dude. This kind of purplish red brown they got going on. Very, very nicely done. And once again, this is the sculpting. So I'll give you all a closer look of that. Don't mind my sausage gorilla fingers here. Look at the look at the texture on the hosing here. I mean, it looks like they just plucked that out from like up underneath the car hood, man. It looks great. Might have been cool to get some uh, blast effects, but that's just me nitpicking. That would have been pretty cool. You know, humans, we got to complain about something. <laughs> But just look at this, dude. The sculpting on this is incredible, man. What a phenomenal figure, dude. Look at that red. So cleanly applied. Well, there's a, there's a little bleed right there, but that's so inconspicuous and small on the shelf. I'm not going to notice that. I got I got to give the critique, though. I got to say what's what I see. You know, I, I'm going to give it to y'all straight. But oh, one thing I meant to show y'all on the articulation. I did show y'all how it bends up. There's, this is also separate. So you've got the turret that bends at the wrist here. Like I said, you can see that hose moving, so just be careful of that. Keep that in mind. And then you've got this kind of this rod that goes inserts into itself. So that's that's really badass, man. What a great looking figure, dude. And other than the super battle droid, this this is I think this may be my second favorite droid of all time out of the CIS, the separatists. Now we're going to get to my favorite part of the video, and this is where I give y'all some side-by-side -side comparisons so y'all can see how this scales up with other figures. And I'm really, I just have so much fun doing this part of my videos, and it just really kind of brings it to life when you get the other characters uh, all next to each other, and it just makes the shelf feel, oh, 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 I forgot something. I, that's why I wanted to keep messing around with it. So right here, it looks like we got some, I guess this would technically be like their elbow or their shoulder. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it would be a shoulder. There's, so there's, more, there's some articulation here as well, as you can see. Once again, be cautious of these hoses because they probably will get bent and break over time. So just be careful when you're messing around with it. But yeah, this is sick, dude. This is awesome. All right, well, let me get some, uh, let me get some other figures off my shelf and we'll go over some side-by-side -side comparisons real quick. Starting us off here for the side-by-side -side comparisons here on the right is General Obi-Wan Kenobi. Target exclusive. Now here on the right, standing in, I have the brand new Kiati Mundi, probably the best Jedi mold body in the entire line so far. Just did a re uh, review on this figure about two weeks ago, so go check that out. I really appreciate it. Now standing in here in the middle, I have Padme Amidala from the red and black box packaging. And obviously here on the very far right is Padawan Ahsoka. And as you can see here in the middle is, here is Mace Windu. And on the right is Asajj Ventress. Now standing in, I have Count Dooku here in the middle. And on the right is the Clone Wars version of Darth Maul. Now standing in the middle, I have the Coruscant Guard, or better known as the Shock Trooper. That's on the 2020 uh, clone body. And then here on the right is the brand new 2023 clone body, uh, Ahsoka's 332nd Battalion. And here's the brand new 2023 clone buck, uh, Phase 1 Clone Trooper from the Attack of the Clones subline. And I thought an appropriate way to end off the side-by-side -side comparisons would be to compare this droid with the other droids. And here in the middle, right here, is R5. Here's also on the brand new updated R2 Astromech body. Here's the updated R2, correctly scaled, uply scaled R2, and the Archive C-3PO. And real quick, I almost skimmed over this. Uh... There actually is another point that of articulation that I missed. And here at the kind of waist or abdomen crunch, I guess where this is where any other figure, I guess it would be like the abdomen or waist. But there is some slight articulation here. I guess that's just to help you get it into ball form. It doesn't move a lot, but there there is a point that I forgot to mention. So it goes that about that far back and that far forward. So just something that I skimmed over by accident. And I just wanted to tell you all and show you all real quick. Another point of articulation that I almost skipped over. Like I said, I did watch a couple of reviews because I was just so uh, anxious and had a lot of angst about seeing it in hand. 
but I didn't walk, really watch them in depth in depth. But uh, so there is some also some leg tilt here that I, I looked over slightly. So that's pretty cool. Another point of artic. There's a lot of points of articulation on this figure. I'm I am very very impressed. Master destroy us. Sorry, I had to do it one more time. I had to do it one more time. But y'all, this is the Jordica. Uh, this is the Destroyer Jordy. That's pretty much the end of my review. That's all I have to say about this figure. And all I can say is I totally, totally recommend it. Uh, don't wait if you happen to see this. Uh, this is a fan channel exclusive, which means it'll be on uh, big retailers like Big Bad, Entertainment Earth. And it uh, might be hard to catch it in the wild, but if you go check out your local GameStops, that's also fan channel as well. So check out your local GameStops if you want to try to cop them in the wild. Uh, real quick, shout out to Big Bad. Cool sticker. But shout out to Big Bad for really being on top of these pre-orders lately. I got Kiati Mundi uh, very fast. And they wasted no time shipping him out and getting him to my pile of loot. Uh, yeah, just, like, like I was saying, shout out to big shout out to Big Bad for just handling these pre-orders and getting them shipped out so fast, so quickly. Uh, just yeah, just super excited and pleased with how they've been dealing with their orders lately. But that's pretty much the end of my review. I appreciate you all tuning in. I hope you're having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. May the force be with you. And there is actually no penis on this figure, so some of you may be disappointed. And there's actually uh, no penis on this figure, so some of you may <laughs> And I don't know if y'all noticed, but there's actually uh, no penis on this figure. <laughs> So I was, to, I was trying to add that line about the penis in my review, but I just couldn't keep a straight face and not laugh from every time I said it. But one of my buddies actually dared me. He's like, "Hey, when you're doing your figure review, I dare you to mention something about one of your one of your figures not having a penis or something like that." It was just a little bit of humor for y'all.